All right, let's cut across right now to the all-important interview of Prashant Kishore uh, by Rajdeep Sardasai and Rahul Kaval. Hello and welcome to this India Today special. Verdict 2022 has delivered an emphatic victory to the BJP in four of the five states, to the Aam Aadmi Party in one. The postmortems are continuing. The Congress is engaged in a blame game. And the BJP and even Prime Minister Narendra Modi believe that 2024 is almost a done deal. But what really lies ahead of Indian politics? Joining me and my colleague Rahul Kaval is a very special guest. The premier political election strategist in this country, Prashant Kishore. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Prashant, on the show. Thank I'm going to start with your latest tweet that has created a bit of a stir, where you've said, the battle for India will be fought and decided in 2024, not in any state election. Saheb knows this. Hence, this clever attempt to create frenzy around state results to establish a decisive psychological advantage over opposition. Don't fall or be part of this false narrative. Presumably, Saheb means Narendra Modi. Yes. You still call him Saheb. But I want to understand. Do you concede, though, that the BJP now has the momentum? And therefore, the Prime Minister is right in suggesting that 2024 could well be a done deal. No, actually not. You know it. And, and that's why I've said that he knows it more than anybody else, uh, that state elections cannot decide the uh, general elections. You know, you have seen what has happened in the past. Even if we go by the UP example, you look at 2012, what happened? SP swept UP. And BJP was number four party. What happened in 2014? So Prime Minister, in his speech, quoted what happened in 2017 and 19. One can always quote 2002 onwards, and UP has never voted in Lok Sabha in the same way as uh, they vote in the Vidhan Sabha. It is possible, and it, or it is quite possible that they vote other way, other way around. But the it's momentum, the momentum surely is with Sahib. You called him Sahib, so presumably no, you still I, call him Sahib. No, it's not about me calling him Sahib. He's called Sahib in a different way. But uh, uh, see. It's like a, a tournament where you have got the victory in the league match. Of course, if you go and face the same team in the finals, you might feel and commentators will say that you have an advantage because you have defeated the team you are facing in the league match. But is it a guarantee that you are going to defeat in the final? That in 2012, while Akhilesh won, there was BJP and Modi waiting in the wings in 2014. Yes. Whereas in 2022, in the manner in which the triumvirate of uh, Modi, Shah and Yogi have led the BJP to power, there is no one waiting uh, in the opposition to challenge them to put up a battle which can take on this juggernaut and beat them. No, so I don't know when you say somebody was waiting in the wings. I was with working with Mr. Modi in 2012 and to tell you the truth, I, I, we did not see that we were waiting in the wing or he was waiting in the wing. Though now media or everyone believes as if everyone knew in 2011-12 that he is going to win India. But 2012, in March, the preoccupation, I can tell you as a first-hand information was uh, Gujarat election that he were to face in October. It was not about UP. So what he is trying to do, anyone would do. He has won. They have won decisively and he would obviously like to m make it count. But two years is a very long time in so politics, we all know. 2024 is not decided. What? Not at all. PK, according to you, must happen between now and 2024 for India's opposition to put up some semblance of a challenge against the BJP. So I... I don't have a ready uh, solution or an answer to that, but anyone who is taking that 2024 is a done deal is making a huge mistake. And I'm sure BJP leaders, they are the last one to take 2024 for granted that it is done deal. It is not a done deal. You look at what happened last time in 2018. They lost three elections just on the eve of Lok Sabha. Congress got into this feeling that we are almost there. They lost Chhattisgarh, they lost Madhya Pradesh and uh, Rajasthan. Four months later, in the same states, BJP swept. The difference is the BJP today seems to be an election machine, knows how to fight elections. On the other hand, the opposition seems to be completely either imploding or struggling to come up with a narrative that is appealing enough, that is credible enough. You know, that ultimately decides. If you go back to 2012-2014, Mr. Modi was able to create this whole Achedin uh, narrative built on anti-incumbency, built on the anti-corruption movement of Anna Hazari, no, just, eventually just, label the, the uh, UPS corrupt. Sorry to interrupt you, but 
you know, just go two years back. And what was the situation of uh, BJP, who, which was the party in opposition in 2010 and 11? UPA 2 formally in place, all leadership with Congress and BJP in complete disarray. Mm. One Mr. Modi completely revived, of, of course together with others, but downfall of UPA 2, Congress led UPA 2, started only from 2011 onwards. 2009-10, BJP was equally in dumps, at least electorally, after having the worst perform, performance and aging leadership in Mr. Ad, uh, L.K. Adwani and not knowing who is going to replace him, all no, parties no, go I, I concede it. that, but 2011, you have the Anna Hazare movement led by, yes, among so others, by Arvind Kejriwal, India against corruption, you have a series of scams, you so have high inflation, you have low growth rate, you have a series of mistakes, the, as the split up of Andhra Pradesh, various self goals, mistakes are committed by the ruling party. So all party. these things is, are quite possible, you are you're talking about a high inflation situation, you are talking about uh, low growth, uh, uh, growth you are talking about unemployment, what is... All of which was there even now, yes, that's and yet saying. the BJP won four out of five states, even in no, 2022, that... after COVID, after high uh, uh, unemployment, after low growth rate, uh, joblessness, the BJP still won. No, that is fine, but we are talking about whether it is an indication for 2024 or anything can change or it is a done deal. Mm. Let's stick to that question, yes. then we'll come to the state one. So, what I'm trying to tell you, if you analyze closely what was happening between 2009 and 14, the situation is not very dif different for opposition than what it was for BJP at that time. Maybe BJP was a bit more coherent and organized party than what Congress is looking today. But when you are ruling seven year, ten year, the ruler always looks more, much more stronger than what he so, or so is. Before Rahul dives in, just let me just pursue that one. You know, there was Manmohan Singh as the leader. Yes. Today there is Narendra Modi. There's a huge difference between a charismatic leader who attracts votes to himself no, you're and making, a leader no, again, who was appointed no, again, by someone else. Again, this is what is retrofitting, Rajdeep. You know, Manmohan Singh, for all what we talk, he won single-handedly probably the biggest mandate Congress has got. Manmohan Singh as a Prime Minister, under him, Congress got the biggest mandate in recent 20, 25 years. After post, I believe after 1984, 84. the biggest mandate Congress got was when Mr. Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister. 600 million people in this country still do not make 100 rupees a day. So if you are in a government, you better be careful. And you, we have seen the mighty Modi and mighty BJP and the government had to back out on motley crowd of Sorry for using the motley crowd, the farmers. One year agitation has pushed government on the back foot. So everyone who's watching this broadcast, PK, at this time, would have one key question in their mind, which is, what's PK up to? You no, said I'm after up to the West Bengal elections yes. that you now want to stop being part of IPAC, which is your election management firm. Then there was an effort to join the Congress, which came a cropper. Talks are still on, but we don't know where they're going. You're saying that 2024 is still up for contest. It's not a done deal. Everyone would want to know, PK, kya kar rahe? <laughs> No, it's not in the context of what I'm going to do. I'm saying theoretically, and for all those who are the serious watcher of the political space, uh, I don't see that 2024 is done there. You I'm made that point. Okay. Starting with Mr. Modi himself, and that is why he would have made the uh, statement. If you watch what I have been telling in one or two interviews, which I gave in between, where people were asking what is going to happen in UP, I have been telling whatever happens in UP, please do not correlate with 2024 because I know this is what is going to happen. The fact is you mentioned farm laws, but even in the areas where the farm agitation was at its peak, in Western Uttar Pradesh, the BJP has done better than the opposition. You know, the fact is, from an outside perspective, it appears particularly, the BJP has a clear election strategy. It has a leader. It has uh, the issues that it believes that can win it votes. It's a vote catching machine. On the other hand, the opposition appears completely from an outside perspective to be totally fragmented, devoid of either leadership or organizational strength to take on this juggernaut, which is why the sense one gets is we are heading, as some would say, to an increasingly one party democracy, especially at the center. First of all, let's put the fact. It's not one party democracy. At the BJP, BJP, even today, they rule 50% of India, not more than that. You look at geography, you look at population under rule, or you look at number of MLAs. They are below 50% on all counts. So sure. let's not create this psychological advantage that everything is gone. 
Having said so, what has happened in states? Exactly what you said. Opposition or the challengers could not put together, uh, say, uh, a leader who is trusted, putting together a compelling narrative, supported by a strong party and a sustained campaign. As I say, these four things, have, at least three of this has to come together. Now look at case in example, because everyone is talking about UP. UP, you had a strong party in SP as a challenger. As a party, they're not weak. In Achilles, they do have a face. And what, to my mind, was missing was there was no counter narrative. Beyond the fact that you want to defeat Modi or uh, uh, Yogi there uh, in Uttar Pradesh, there was no narrative. And campaign was com completely missing. We must not make mistake of seeing election rallies as a campaign. What is happening is this traditional method of just waking up two months or three months before elections. No matter how charismatic a leader you are, no matter how strong your party is, if you wake up two, three months before election and you'll go and you'll do 200 public rallies and just go on bashing of BJP, it's not going to work. There is enough evidence. Compare this to Bengal. A two-year sustained campaign uh, a leader in Mamta Banerjee and a party uh, which is a strong Trinamool party, they, they butchered literally, electorally butchered BJP in, in Bengal. So what must hypothetically the opposition do in Opposition, your view? first of all, has to do, do not take elections as one month or two month exercise. You cannot wake up two months before the election and then feel that everything is, is going to fall in place. Yes, of course you need face. Of, but you need far important than the face is to build the narrative. This is the government or BJP leadership. They are 24-7 in campaign mode. They win UP, they win four state. Next day, Prime Minister is campaigning in Gujarat. Opposition is sitting, maybe taking stock, maybe sulking, I don't know. You will wake up three months before the election of Gujarat. Now, you have to be super smart to, I don't know how even the super smart would be enough because you would try to achieve in three months what somebody would have tried so what would you year. have done if you were advising Akhilesh? I would have, what would Akhilesh, what was this narrative that Akhilesh Yadav should have built I, on? I am nobody to advise Akhilesh, but theoretically speaking, if Akhilesh Yadav and the Samajwadi party would have started their work immediately after 2019 loss, and that is like two year and a half, exactly what Trinamool did in uh, Bengal. They lost in May and they put the counter in, they started the counter in June. If it means changing the organizational structure, so be it. If it means changing, if you are in government, if it means changing the policy, so be it. If it means finding new candidates, so be it. If it was about revamping your booth, uh, booth committees and booth members, everything. It takes time. And so what this. could have been the narrative if you were advising Akhilesh or planning his campaign? What narrative could he have built given these circumstances to mount a more formidable challenge? I, I would have revamped uh, SP starting 2019 when he decided to go alone that I'm going to, by and large, going to fight UP alone. I would have looked at the track record. SP has never got more than 27% vote as a single party in UP. So I would have looked at that whether my machinery is good enough to fight alone in UP together with some smaller parties. To fight UP alone, I would have changed the entire organization. I would have also built a much bigger social representation of different uh, caste groups within the SP organizational setup. It's very important. Look at the number of MLAs and their caste. I think yesterday some article has come. 11 forward class MLAs have been elected on SP ticket, I believe. Mm -hmm. Look at the BJP's thing, it is equal, equal. The OBC and the forward class MLAs are almost 50% each. What does it tell you? That bottom up, more workers, more contenders, more MLAs or potential candidates representing a bigger number of social groups are or were part of BJP, while you were banking on two or three or four substantial as they, they were caste groups, it becomes like 40 versus 60 or so, 30 versus 70. So BJP 70. has widened its social base. Anyone BJP, as I it. said, has an organizational strength. They have a leader. Let's turn to the elephant in the room. Because if the opposition has to revive, the Congress party, which is the principal opposition party, has to, in a sense, also get its act together. There was much talk six months ago that you were going to advise the Congress for some reason. And you can tell us today, perhaps, why it went wrong. And perhaps tell us whether you still see a future in the Indian National Congress. Well, I have been on record, Congress will always have a future. 
whether Congress in the present formation has a future or not, that is for the present leadership to decide. I am nobody to comment about that. But anyone who thinks that Congress, the idea and the space is going to die in this country, so long the democracy is there, so long multi-party democracy exists in this country, Congress will be there. In the 2019 election, 191 direct Congress BJP fights. The BJP won 175 of them with a margin of more than 15% on an average. Clearly, there's something wrong in direct contest. We've seen in these elections, Uttarakhand direct contest, BJP wins. Uh, Manipur, BJP wins, defeats anti-incumbency. Goa, BJP wins. The sense one gets is that for the BJP, the Congress under Rahul Gandhi is the perfect enemy. Do you agree or not? I wouldn't say it's, it's not about the individual, uh, Rajdeep. Again, we are talking about seriously what is wrong with Congress. Yes. So you, it's not a function of a person. It's a, I have explained this in some other interviews also. Congress has been in secular decline electorally since 1985. Please, your viewers should take note of this. Congress has been in secular decline as a political organization since 1985. They, and it cannot be all at, attributed to Rahul Gandhi or the present leadership. Last they have won this country was 1984. Since then, 15 years, Congress has ruled this country, but once as a minority government and twice as a coalition government. I give an example to explain this point. See, in 1989, Congress, in the eyes of people, lost the election. You know, as an organization, as a party, they won 198 MPs. In 2004, we said, we all say that Congress won. As a party, they won 145 MPs. So Congress has been declining as a political party. What does it tell you? That they require to change fundamentally the way they organize themselves, the way they conduct themselves, the way they do the mass outreach, the way they fight elections. Everything needs to change and undergo significant change. It will not come out with some, uh, you know, it's like you have a cancer and you cannot, and you are so wanting what, to treat it with a, some antibiotic. What it's went not wrong, PK, in your conversation with the Congress leadership? No, no, nothing went wrong. What I, I, again, on this I have been on record. See, on most of the point, first of all, it was not about an election in 2024. It was about long term, because this is what I believe. If Congress has to revive itself, it has to be a long term approach. Seven, eight, seven, ten years. That doesn't mean that you cannot be a fighting machine in 2024, but you have to take a long-term approach. On most of the point, there was an agreement, but for two or three crucial issues. But significant issue was that for both of us to work together, I think both sides needed to take the leap of faith. Because of what my past and my own experience, uh, because of my past, they would have some reasons to doubt that whether they can trust me blindly or not. And because of my experience with them in UP, I have my own doubt that once I go and join them, whether I would be able to do what uh, we are agreeing to do. Willing because to a talk? section of the Congress believes you're a Modi mole, you're a BJP mole. Well, <laughs> that here is someone who's been in different parties and therefore how do we trust? You see, the Congress I have already I have already told you that because of my background, it is... The conventional way of trusting and getting somebody to work with you will not work. You have to take a leap of faith. Whether they are willing to take that leap of faith or not, it's completely on them. It's not for you me. Know, that, that on your part, you're open. I, I'm open. I, if they come and they talk, there's no problem with me. Okay. One, one view within the Congress is if the Gandhi family were to leave, quit, Kapil Sibal has now said it openly, the party would revive. Do you believe that or no. not? You don't See, believe that? Uh, uh, whether Gandhis are there or they are not there, whether Prashant Kishore works with them or somebody else works with them, until and unless they do the fundamentals right as a party, as we say, that you, they, it's time for Congress to go back to the drawing board and do the fundamentals right. Which is what? Which is, I give an example, they have not done a pan-India membership drive in the last 20 years. Do you need a Prashant Kishore to fix that? Do you, whether... You are a Congress president or Gandhi are a Congress president. That's a futile exercise to say. They do not have even a semblance of internal democracy. The centralization of power, this high command, where the general secretaries are far more powerful than the biggest of the leaders in the state. These are the fundamental things. Unless you empower your leader on the ground, it's just not going to work. You bring anybody. So what is the point in whether X, Y, Z is the president or not? It's not important. They have to get the thing, uh, fundamentals right. But then where does the challenge come from? You see, where, if, if as you are saying, the Congress has to go back to the drawing board and it is a long-term fix that they have to do. 
if regional parties, some of whom you worked with, the Mamta Banerjee's, the Stalins, possibly the buzzes you're working with KCR also now in Telangana, is that true? I, I see. I'm not working with anybody, as I said on second of. May in the manner or form which people know me to work with. But I do interact with a lot of people just as a part of my own learning, exposure. But it's not that I have now you will see Prasant Kishore working with Mr. KCR as I used to do earlier. Because you've been attacked also that Prashant Kishore attempted to try and get the Trinamool Congress to go from Bengal no, to no, Goa. No, no, see, this is... And it's a complete... Dubai disaster. Dubai Dhyapi Kene. The Trinamool okay. Congress... Okay. 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 It's a it's failure. Okay, fine. CV. On your CV. But anyone who, <laughs> everyone is writing my CV and, <laughs> see, in my own head, I never look at things in two months, three months. So whether I'm advising Mamta Energy, whether I'm advising Congress or Nitish Kumar or KCR, my advice would be the same, that if you want to have a national, you, you want to emerge as a national alternative uh, to BJP, you have to have a 10 to 15 years point of view. There is no shortcut to it. India is not only a country, electorally speaking, it's a continent. And nobody, only two party has been electorally been pan-India in true senses. It took more than 30, 40, 50 years for Congress and it took not less than 20 years for BJP to become a pan-India party. You and I could be maybe more smart than those who have done BJP and Congress, but the 20 year work you cannot be doing in two years or two months. So the question of me advising any regional leader or party to say that, okay, you will become a national alternative. Was going advise. to Goa for the Trinamool Congress a mistake? Do you take part of the blame no, for no, advising? No, no, not, at all, not this? at all. See, in multi-party democracy, all parties or leaders are free to go and try their luck wherever they want. Mm -hmm. Everyone is talking about Punjab. Now, if Ahmadi party would have not gone there, they would not have got this success. And it has not happened overnight because 9 out of 10 people, they think that Ahmadi Party, are inko to pata hi tha kaise jeet ke Punjab mein. They are there 10 years. They, they, they had four MPs in 2014. So from, they have started their journey in 2013. So it has taken them 10 years to win a state, mid-sized state in India, which is Punjab. And I cannot emphasize and keep on emphasizing that you cannot do things overnight. So is, is Ahmadi Party which as you said, is, uh, has built itself in a mid-sized state, uh, won a big mid-sized state like Punjab. Are they the alternative? As you look ahead to 2024, there's so much of buzz at the moment around the AAP <laughs> taking over the space of the Congress yeah. and emerging as a potential rival to the BJP in the future. Yeah, first of all, I don't want to take any credit away from Aam Aadmi Party. Good luck to them. They are doing very well and I, my best wishes to them. Uh, but, you know, this media frenzy, every time... Uh, a Mamta wins, then Mamta is a new alternative. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal wins, now Arvind Kejriwal is a new alternative. And everyone is trying to outwit the other person in calling who is the new challenger. Actually, that's not the case. I don't think Aam Aadmi Party overnight can become a national challenger. It's not possible. No matter no, but how... even they're not thinking of overnight. Yes. They also no, think of 2029. Whether, whether, whether they are thinking or not, I'm not speaking on their behalf. I'm saying you're asking me, yes. can they be the challenger? It's a long shot. It's like, Razdeep, uh, of many startups, few go on to become unicorn. But from the unicorn, very rarely somebody goes on to become a trillion dollar company. So a, st a political startup like Aam Aadmi Party winning and becoming a, they have become a unicorn. No, but they only sense. want to be a decacorn but, right but now. For, but for them to become a pan-India party, a force to reckon with, uh, it's it's a big challenge, specifically as I was telling before uh, we started the interview. I would like to see Aam Aadmi Party in Hindi heartland uh, against BJP, and how do they do there? No, but they don't have the baggage of the past. They don't have. No, of course they have the scams no, of, of, that the Congress governments did in the past. See, so of therefore, course, people look at them with a clean and different uh, no, lens. No, of course they have certain advantage. Whenever when you are new or small. With the size and you being new comes some advantage, but then are, there are some disadvantages, disadvantages as well. As they go on to rule, say, Punjab, now there, there could be a problem in Punjab. Sure. So you, when you become the ruling party, the Aam Aadmi Party, as they were seen when they started their journey in Delhi, the purest, a party with a difference, increasingly they look more like a mainstream party with some difference with less baggage and legacy as you're rightly saying 
but they are becoming more and more like a traditional party as we, we have so seen. So you are ruling out Kejriwal as a challenger to Mr. Modi because you've often said that elections in India are becoming presidential, particularly general elections, that you need they, a it, face it, it always who was. challenges... It always someone. was. This is again a mistake of people who think that Mr. Modi has made it presidential. It was presidential when Indira Gandhi used to fight. When Indira Gandhi would have broke from Congress and entire organization remained with Congress, and still see one 300 seat, it was a presidential no, but election. but in Arvind Kejriwal, the Aam Aadmi Party has a leader who is not bound by geography, not bound by a particular caste or community, and has nationwide recall. So, That's a strong asset base to build on. I'm, I'm saying that theoretically, they might be ticking many of these boxes. Mm -hmm. But ticking some boxes is one thing, and getting it executed on the ground and being successful in such execution is a different thing. Look at their performance in Uttarakhand and Goa. There haven't been a massive wave in favor of AAP. Maybe in Punjab, I tell you, I handled uh, Punjab election in 2017. They would have won equal number of seats, if not more, in 2017 as well. Then but Congress happened? was able to hold them uh, in 2017, uh, that time. So maybe there, what looks in Punjab is there was a vote against the existing system. You don't have, a, you don't get an election where a senior Badal and Amrinder and uh, sitting chief ministers and Sukhbir Badal loses against people uh, who no one knew. So this is not a normal vote. But whether this holds on, we'll have to see. So you, no, think but, it's, but the fact once again, you think it's easier to revive the Congress than it is to scale the Aam Aadmi Party? Both are equally challenging. But I, I would still go back. If, if my neck is on the line and I have to say which one is easier, I would still say Congress with... See, Today, Aam Aadmi Party is one MP party. Last election, they have got, if I recall correctly, about 27 lakh vote. To win India, you need 25 crore vote. So you are talking about 100 times plus scaling up. For Congress, you are talking about 10, 11 crore vote, which has to go up to, say, 20 or 25. But that said, Congress had the legacy and all the problems. It's a larger ship. SIP probably, which many would see sinking, so that much more difficult. But I'm saying just because Congress, it is difficult to revive Congress, that doesn't mean that tomorrow TMC can become a national party or AAP can become national party. If they have to become national party, it also requires a very concerted and uh, tireless effort for many, many more years before they become the national party. Which, where you know, which is exactly where I'm coming BJP. from. What you're saying is that AAP needs time to scale up. Congress. Any party, I'm not saying any, any party. Yes. Any Congress party. needs to go back to the drawing board. You've also been interestingly quoted when you did a function in Goa as suggesting win or lose, the BJP is going to be the central pivot of Indian politics because they have achieved a 30% national vote share. Given all that, yes. given all that, can we not safely say that at least for the next decade, the BJP will be the dominant force, the pole of Indian politics and all these other parties, including the regional leaders that you've been associated with, will struggle to combat the BJP. That's the point that I started off with, that we are reaching a stage in Indian politics where you have a dominant force and all the others now have to slowly struggle to match up to the BJP. Absolutely, but I have said it, as you rightly said, that they will be the dominant force. That the BJP. Yes, but that doesn't mean that they will not be defeated. You could be defeated and still you will be the dominant force. Congress, for first 50 years or 60 years, remained the dominant force and still they were defeated in many places. And even in India, they were defeated. Uh, let me be on yes. record. They can, if Congress puts its act together today, mm -hmm. they can very well challenge BJP in 2024. And I give you two big... In just two years? In just two years. I tell you why. Soya wa hati hai, sir. No, it may be... Hati to hai, aap kehe rahe ho na. Wo thik hai, hati ko uthne ki samasya hai. But you see, there are two big chink in armor of BJP that, that is apparent to everyone who looks the mm -hmm. situation carefully. First, BJP, despite their dominance and the dominance of Mr. Modi as a political brand and the most popular leader, they, in 200 seats of India, which is East and South, starting from Bihar, add, to Beng add that to Bengal, Urissa, Telangana, Andhra, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. In roughly about 200 seats, BJP is still struggling to get more than 50 seats. And this despite the success in Bihar, this despite their reasonably very good success in West Bengal and Urissa. They have 17 seats in Bihar, 18 in uh, Bengal, 12 in uh, uh, Urissa, 4 or 5 in Telangana. Yes. That's it. What does it tell you? There are 150 MPs 
who are literally on the opposition side but not effective as as such if a party and not unified also not no they, they are unified in one thing that they are fighting bjp most yes. of them so in the remaining 350 odd seat if a party and i'm saying any party whether it's aap whether it's trinamool whether it's revived congress if they snatch 120 seats the situation changes overnight so theoretically speaking in 2 years do you think it is impossible for a party like congress to win 120 seat they are at 40 maybe 50 to double that number in 2 years it's theoretically not impossible what would you do to make it happen how would you do it again i i'm not going If to discuss on, on i i i will go back on the drawing board and re what i told them that you have to reincarnate the congress revamp of congress will not do you have to reincarnate where the soul and the principles and the ideas and ideologies remain but everything else has to be the new yeah give us one face that you see today who potentially <laughs> can be a magnet to bring these forces I, I, together i i i i give us give us one I, face i i tell you i will not give the face but i will say if congress really puts their mind together they can be the entity around which it could be formed as far as the face is concerned this is such again this is a false narrative that people push all the time if we were sitting and having this discussion in 1973 74 हम में से कोई बता सकता था कि जेपी करके एक लीडर हैं जो कि फेस बन जाएंगे ही विल गैल्वेनाइज इफ वी वेर हैविंग दिस डिस्कशन से इन 1987 कैन एनीवन वुड हैव सेड कि बीपी सिंह वो फेस हो जाएंगे इफ यू पुट टुगेदर एंड इफ यू गेट द नैरेटिव राइट एंड इफ यू हैव द कोलिसन ऑफ ऑल पीपल हु आर ऑन वन साइड आइडियोलॉजिकली एंड इन द डिजायर टू डिफीट बीजेपी the face will emerge from there and, uh, a grand reunification of all these the mamta banerji sharad pawar jagan mohan reddy is all coming back to the congress a party which they were once part of do you believe that's a solution no i see it's, these things it could be a solution but it will what won't happen it, it, it's, it's not possible but what i say that congress has to first put this idea that we have to defeat bjp then comes the idea that congress should be the largest beneficiary of it and then should be that okay x my leader should be the leader of that winning mm. combination right now i dare say their thinking is in reverse so you start thinking that my leader should be the leader congress should be the biggest beneficiary and then bjp should be defeated i am saying just reverse this uh, this thought that we have to defeat bjp congress as the largest party should be the biggest beneficiary of it and then comes that okay if all falls in place our choice choice as far as the leadership of that coalition is concerned should also fall in place can i ask you though that what are the top four reasons that you believe that people vote for the bjp today is it modi is it hindutva is it a sense that of welfareism is it nationalism or is it there is no alternative there is modi only what is it that you think is driving people towards making the bjp as we saw in up a 40% plus party and in three ad uh, you know two consecutive general elections winning such big mandates what is making bjp win is this combination of hindutva nationalism and targeted individual and household level welfareism, welfareism. it's powerful combo to to take on unless you better them ideologically on hindutva part not by becoming the soft hindutva and all you have to appeal to the liberal hindus in a manner that galvanizes them and data is telling that for every hindu who is probably is taken by this hindutva narrative pushed by bjp there is one hindu who is not willing to sign up for this what Because data are you looking at but any data you look at the, at an aggregate level bjp gets 38% vote so if you remove the minorities and you are talking about 80% <clears throat> what does it tell you that of the 80% hindus bjp is getting roughly about 50% hindus to vote what does it tell you in simple word for every hindu assume that every vote that that is being voted to bjp is voted because they are they are convinced about the hindutva narrative of bjp even if that is the case there is for every hindu who is convinced one hindu is not convinced so if i am a challenger i would look at the those who are not convinced rather than getting into debate that those who are convinced by this hindutva narrative pushed by bjp how to win them over i will my starting point will be those who are not convinced have not been convinced at least in last 10 years and then i work towards getting that 40% vote share which is quite possible but it's very interesting there's a new woman vote i'm i'm so so delighted that you are raising this question because all everyone some of the most informed people are making such a big mistake on this women thing 
women as a voting block are increasingly becoming more and more important. Agree. But please, please, please do not try to say that just because women turnout was more, that is why some party won or lost. I give you hard data for your view viewers to understand. It is a largely it's a denominator effect. There are less. So for example, in this round of elections, six states, there were one crore less women voter in UP, an aggregate number, 11.5 crore, if my memory serves well, 11.5 crore people have voted. No, 11.5 uh, crore are the voter turnout in 50 lakh women voter is less. 5 lakh, uh, uh, 50 lakh like the difference between the women and the men voter. No, even accounting for the denominator effect, the no, fact but is, that if you sample 100 women, there's a bigger gap amongst the women for those who say they voted for the BJP than those who did uh, for the Samajwadi I, party, I even if you account for I the is, denominator effect. I started effect. by saying that women as a voting block is important. So leaders like Mamta Banerjee or Nitish Kumar or increasingly Mr. Modi probably get a bigger share among the women voters. That's but right. Make no mistake, at an aggregate level, there are lesser number of women starting because of the skewed gender ratio and more importantly because of socio-economic reason, less women are registered as electorates and hence a lower number of women voting okay. in percentage terms looks higher. Let me complete this point. In UP, the difference between the male voter and the women voter as electorate is 7%. Could you give us details of the sticking points in the conversation that you were having with the Congress and possible workarounds that if that conversation were to be no, resumed? I think it would be unfair and in, as a matter of principle, whatever I discuss in private, I should remain, in, should remain private and I would never discuss the detail of it. I have told you that there were largely there was agreement on 90, 95% of 95 issues. 95% of the issues. Out of he said 21, 22 issues. So that what were, was that 5% that was left? So the, the two, three issues on which there was like some difference of opinion. I, I'll tell you what we were told. Okay. We were told that you Who wanted to be general, general uh, secretary in charge of end, all elections but and organizations, which this, was in a way seen to be undercutting a certain generation. This, 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 is, this is what, is that what you wanted? No, absolutely not. On record, I'm telling you that it's rather contrary. It's not about the position. The issue, the issue on which there was difference of opinion, I'm not going to say in public, no matter what you say, so you can bank mm -hmm. on your sources. I'm telling you that out of key 21 issues, barring three or four, there was complete agreement. That's what I'm trying to understand. What were the three or four which you couldn't agree no, on? No, but that, that's not Thoda fair. On, no, that's, that's, not, that's not fair on my part to say it in public, but, Rajdeep, you tell us, but it, was largely, it was largely about not having that uh, strength or the the courage on both sides to take that leap of faith. When I asked some really senior BJP politicians whom I can't name, but I asked him <laughs> about uh, Prashant Kishore's interest in joining the BJP after the victory in 2014, he basically made the point that iske bas ki nahi hai. You know, a pathologist doesn't make a good surgeon. He may be good at reading reports and telling you what's wrong. It doesn't mean he can get into uh, the dust and bowl of Indian politics and be a real neta. Possible. No, see, all the criticism or the limitations I have, I would rather expand it and say I have got many more. I am not even an expert pathologist, but going by that analogy. But I am willing to learn and I have taken this one year break before 2nd of May. I can tell you that much. Before 2nd of May, I would make a formal announcement or formal beginning of what I want to do in my new... Uh, uh, You'll set up your own party, Neva Congress, Eto. I don't know what, if I would have known that I'm going to set up my party, I would have announced it today. But I'm saying whatever may be By the case, second of May? Second, because 2nd of May one is year. when the... One year from Bengal. One year from Bengal when I said that I'm quitting. I have given to myself that whatever decision I take, I will give myself one year. Unless you understand the grammar of this new politics, yeah. it will be very difficult you accept to challenge the BJP and Prime Minister Modi. But you believe mushkil hai, lekin namumkin nahi. No, no, it is quite doable. It is quite. It is, it is for opposition in this country. Let me finish on this. For opposition in this country, it is quite doable to defeat BJP in 2024. 
provided you start working today, not in January, don't wake up in January 2024 and try to cobble up some, oppo some uh, form of opposition and some coalition and go and address 500 and that, rallies and think you know, that the whole world the, is the, going and to And that includes you. winning states like Gujarat, Himachal, which no, come later no, this year? No, or it's only 20, mission 2024? It should be 2024. That should be the front and the winning state should come the as the BJP back. top leadership? dismisses this man, but the fact is the one person who has a proven track record of giving it back as good as he gets is Prashant Kishore, which is They lost the two, two high decibel elections, one in Bihar in 2015, they were, they, they were head on, and in Bengal recently. I'm not, I'm nobody, but I'm saying the opposition's strength should not be undermined, and BJP knows it better than I know. Okay, let's leave it there. Clearly, in a sense, you've set the stage for what lies ahead. Uh, to, towards 2024. Lots of excitement, lots of potential twists and turns. Thank Prashant you. Kishore for spending the time and sharing your insights. Appreciate your joining us. Thank you Thank so you. much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.